care. We all carry a slippery, wildly associative etymological dictionary within ourselves. In mine, the English word care, to look after, used to share a root with a Latin caritas, or charitable, and was cousin to the Italian caro, dear, darling, valued and valuable, too. All these senses of care belonged, it seemed to me, in that bright bit of the word garden where the affections thrive. Mothers could go there to nurse their babies, partners to cherish each other, or the roses. Through the generations and centuries, such caring emotions have become linked with the feminine. In the feminist 1970s and 80s, they were constituted as women's work. Women performed the emotional labor in the family, cared for partners, babies, children, and ailing aged parents. All of this, of course, unpaid. Or if paid to caring domestic health, then paid very badly. When care was nudged in Britain and in much of Europe, at first into the welfare economy and later into the privatized or the public-private care economy, which juggled the making of money with a meeting of needs, the people who carried out the labor of care, the carers, nurses, elder home workers, child minders, even teachers, joined the ranks of the low paid. During the long months of the COVID plague, the people we now call care professionals emerged as the great heroes of our historical moment. Masked and protectively covered on our screens, it nonetheless became blatantly clear that these brave soldiers in the front line of the battle against the killer virus were, in large proportion, immigrants and from ethnic minorities. Despite the care they lavishly and tirelessly showered on their patients, they remained amongst the lowest paid and most endangered in our society. When I went to research the word care, it turned out to have its origins in Old English and Proto-German, not in Latin at all. Its first meanings were all to do with grief, with sorrow, and lamentation. Later, these meanings migrated to worry and concern. Crucially, attention appeared in these acquisitions of meaning. To care was to pay attention. Attention, if you pause to think, is not really all that far from love. What is it to hold someone dear but to be attentive to them, to focus on their needs and wants, to pay them attention. Why did all those women characters and stories of old fall in love with seductive men? Except that seduction meant paying a kind of concentrated attention the woman rarely received elsewhere. These days, we live, we are told, in an attention economy. Attention is in short supply in our speedy, global, networked world, packed with facts and data and information of various kinds, some reliable, much not at all. Being scarce, attention is a valuable commodity. Everyone competes for our attention. Producers, branders, marketers, politicians, the backers behind them with their ready capital. Meanwhile, our children, though we prefer not to think that the problem is ours and our times, 
readily obtain damning medical diagnoses of attention deficit, a disorder that prevents them from paying the attention that their elders will invest amply in stealing away, but perhaps don't have the time to care enough to give freely. On the other hand, if caring is paying attention, being attentive to those who need it, shouldn't the attention economy be learning from the care sector? Those who work in care, a majority of them women, have an abundance of a desirable and rare commodity. They are attentive beyond the capabilities of the rest of us. We should make them society's professors and remunerate their care accordingly.